Madame Haller, Odin's firstborn, the rightful heir to the throne and the goddess of death. I am Loki, and I am burdened with glorious purpose. You could not live with your own failure. Where did that bring you? Back to me. I did not break your rules. They simply bent to my power. Captures the African-American experience. And welcome back, Internet, to another episode of Views from the 616, the blackest MCU podcast in all of the multiverse, powered by For All Nerds, where we discuss everything in the MCU from the perspective of people of color. And it is one of your hosts, the Tatiana King, a.k.a. the Wicked Witch of the West View, coldest winter soldier ever, Tesseract Thompson, and Schrodinger's Cap. And I am joined... By my lovely red bespectacle ah. co-host. You like that one? Oh, it hurts. <laughs> hurts when <and> breathe. <laughs> oh, yes. Caught astray. Ran a muck. It's your boy DJ Ben I mean, aka We Was Kings. <laughs> AKA the Time Creepers. AKA <laughs> Cosmic Cubert. Hey, there we go. Took me a second. And it does okay. That's all right. It takes everybody a second when you're talking about multiple timelines and things like that. Because there's a lot that I just hear in our review of episode two of Loki titled The Variant. And we're going to give you a quick basic plot and get right into things. So things are getting a little weird and a little dangerous at the TVA. So Agent Mobius takes it upon himself to recruit one problem to solve his other problem, Loki himself. Will our Disney prince be the hero that everybody needs or fall back on his duplicitous ways? The possibilities, like the number of Loki variants, are endless and it's still too early to tell what's going to happen. But one thing is for sure, the Loki variant they've been chasing is actually a she. Could it be Lady Loki? Or not. Or not. Now, that's going to be one of the things that we're going to discuss a lot during our review because there are quite the number of theories about who this variant is. The easy thing is just to say, yo, that's Lady Loki. She looks like Loki. She got the horns like Loki. She essentially behaves like him. But is that truly the lady version of Loki? And Ben, I mean, did you have anything real quick to say about that before we jump into things? Well, it doesn't really relate to Lady Loki, but it does relate to this. And this question was posed to me by my brother, DJ Analyze. Let me shout him out real quick. And he asked me last night, okay, remember in, uh, what's that, Infinity War, right? Dr. Mm -hmm. Strange says, I looked into 4 billion, I can't remember how many. <laughs> yeah, like 14 billion outcomes. Trillion, something, whatever. <laughs> something, something wild. Yeah, outcomes. How sway <laughs> if we have one fast. sacred timeline, how could he have looked into various timelines? Um, well, he still could have looked into it. Like, just because there's supposedly one sacred timeline doesn't mean the other timelines don't exist. Like, we know that the timekeepers, their whole job that they're doing right now, what Mobius says they're doing is to sit there and untangle or, or weave together, rather, in a tight manner, one sacred timeline. But clearly they're pulling pieces from all over. So it, it still makes sense that Dr. Strange said that. Why do you think, why do you have questions about it? I have questions about it, and I do have an answer similar to what you just said, right? I mm -hmm. think that there is no such thing as a sacred timeline. Like Loki refers mm -hmm. to, it is nothing but TVA propaganda because Could there be? are multiple timelines that they are coalescing and choosing and wiping things off to make sure that the sacred timeline is theirs because behind it all is Kang. <laughs> All right, we got to get into it. First of all, Doctor Doom is the uh, one love of the it. ancestors of Kang, so you know that's why I'm rocking today. Oh, is he? Oh, that that, that would make a lot of sense. Ah, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh man, allegedly, so many theories. Yep. But we're gonna get into all that because we have to start first with the theme of the episode. So and our first theme is the very title of this episode called Variants, but also slash. This isn't about you. Mm. Quoth what we're calling, at least for to make things easy, Lady Loki. Mm. Now, the reason why we chose this first as the first theme is because 
we have seen throughout, particularly in this episode, how that there's there's besides the more um literal explanation of variants, right? There, there's lots of different Loki variants. We've learned that uh what Mobius expresses to them that there's there's for every timeline, there's a different version of Loki. They have different powers, abilities, personalities. And we actually get to see a few of them when they're just standing there prepping for that mission to go to the, is it when they were going to the Renaissance fair or after? Mm, well, when they were prepping. My timeline's screwy on that too. Yeah. That's okay. But when they were pre, when they were prepping to go onto their mission, they, he, he shared this information and we see a few Lokis pop up. So in the little, I don't want to, what do you want to call it? Like a holographic kind of thing. Mm. So we see a blue Loki, which Mans is a frost giant after all. So that makes a lot of sense. A little, we that, see, that Loki seemed to be a little bit younger. So also okay. makes sense with the blueness. True, true. We see what I'm calling a Tour de France Loki because oh. he's basically this cyclist literally holding the Tour de France trophy. Before we forget, you know, the blue young Loki was the Loki before he rejected his blackness. And, you know. Went. Oh, my God. You cannot let us get out of here. <laughs> like, you can't let us get what? For eight minutes in <laughs> before you started with your foolishness, my guy. I just want to okay. say, you know what I mean? You know, before he moved into the Golden Palace, I <sighs> forgot who he was. You know how it goes, you know? <laughs> Quoth Killmonger. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he forgot about your peoples, my brother. <laughs> You've been living good up in this palace, my brother. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Yeah, so we have Blue Loki, Tour de France Loki, and what looks like a Hulk slash beastly Loki. Mm -hmm. Trollish Loki. Yeah, kind of like. (laughs) Which could be great. Kind of like Shrek on roids, but Shrek that's juicing, but (laughs) yeah, I don't know. What to make of it? Then we have like a goat horn Loki that has like like natural black horns, mm-hmm. and he's wearing like Mardi Gras beads. Yeah. Very. Oh, what's that? What's that Greek god Pan. Or, or Roman Pan? Thank you. Yeah. Reminds me of Pan. Mm-hmm. And wasn't Pan like a mischievous type god? Oh yeah, Pan is definitely a relationship to Loki. Mischievous, also drinking, which goes in with Mardi Gras. So yeah, that's Pan. Okay, yep. makes sense. And then we then see the old school kind of Norse looking Loki. If someone just used that type of reference and drew what they believe Loki would uh, appear as, that what we would see. The God of War Loki, grown up. Oh, yes. Slight spoiler. Oh, listen, the God of War Loki was, was <laughs> game, a game is like three. You're four years old at this point. Sorry. I'm about y'all. to say that's not really a spoiler. Yeah. If you haven't played a game by now, I don't know what to tell you. Boy. Okay. Yeah, that game, right. That game hurts my heart. Oh. In this conversation, besides kind of displaying, give you some illustrations of all the different variants or some of the different variants, Mobius explains how the TVA has pruned more variants of Loki than almost any other variant. Mm. And I thought that was important to note because to me, as, as especially as you see with, with this version of Loki and even later on towards the end of the episode when you meet Lady Loki, who again, I'm just using that as a title for now, it's just easy to reference. You notice that they are always doing something to the contrary of what the TVA or, or the sacred timeline wants. Mm -hmm. So it would make sense that that's the one variant that they're constantly pursuing. It also makes sense because if you're basing this on Loki's attitude and his personality, even though there may be slight variations, it seems like all of them are very, what's the word where you don't want to play along? Like you, you want to do things your own way, no matter what. Mischievous chaos. But also, there's there's another there's another phrase I want to use that I can't grab right now. But it seems like all of them. One of these still kids is doing their own thing. Defiant. <laughs> there you go. Defiant. <laughs> but they they're all no matter what there is seems to be a level of defiance which in each of these variants where they don't want to stay essentially in their station in life. Mm-hmm. They don't want to commit to this this characterization that you saw Ravana mention him as. Mm-hmm being just he's just there for chaos he's just there as they say to make everybody else look good he's just there to lose he's destined to do all this it seems like all these different variants are pushing against that in some way shape or form Mm -hmm. there you go i mean especially tour de france he pushed against that my man's like i'm a champ (laughs) you know what i mean f all that y'all here to lose (laughs) yeah yeah and he and it just seems to me like they don't they don't want to stay within their predetermined roles Mm -hmm. and the roles as i mentioned where ravana 
really quotes him saying Loki is an evil lying scourge and that's the role he plays in the timeline and and that's that's rough mm. and then Mobius <laughs> when he's having the the kind of back and forth with Loki before they leave to get on the elevator to go to the archives he goes he says to Loki you're history's most reliable liar and mm. so that would also technically also mean that Loki is as a variant in general is very predictable but are we going to see that one variant that's not as predictable I don't know, but you know what I mean? This I, I just keep adding on to my theory. It feels like the feds is out here just, you know, putting slander on my man Loki's name. Time saying all 12. The, you, know, <laughs> sa- you know, yeah, time 12 out here, you know, predetermining that all Lokis are bad. Who does that sound like? <laughs> oh, my God. All fresh giants are bad. You know what I mean? You know, put the fist all up for the frost. don't matter. You know, no timelines matter. Fist up for Frost, baby. Are you are you gonna put that on t-shirt? <laughs> That's the new t-shirt. Oh my lord. Uh <laughs> in terms of <laughs> variants, also, Loki even in a way mentions a variant. He expresses that the time variants in Thor, the authority, and the gods of Asgard are one and the same. Mm. And when he explains it, it kind of really makes sense. He expresses how they're they're, they're, in his words, gods drunk with power. They don't see anything except for what's in front of them and that they underestimate people. Mm-hmm. And he also, and this is when he's in there, when they're in that tent in the Renaissance Fair, he, when he gives that, again, this is him wasting time, but also potentially giving clues to the next step. When he, exp- when he explains all that stuff about the wolf's ears and the wolf's teeth and all that, he says, if you underestimate, that person that they will devour you Mm. and this is technically exactly what lady loki has been doing when she's been ambushing and killing scores of 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 minutemen and hunters left and right in order to affect her greater pan so she's in a way literally devouring these people also uh i almost said lady loki no but uh what's his variant loki uh i'm Mm -hmm. you know variant loki variant loki main character loki is also underestimating lady loki at this point and so much so almost just devoured himself themselves yeah yeah and i wanted to just mention that just even the scene of 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 main character loki meeting lady loki for me it reminded me a lot of the relationship between the mauler twins from invincible Mm -hmm. those who've seen invincible and and i promise you you need to see it but those who've seen invincible on amazon prime there are two characters called well more than two at this point called the mauler twins they're these blue kind of hulking people ish like people who they are literally clones of each other Mm -hmm. and one clone always accuses the other of being a clone and it's literally this back and forth about who's superior who's the lesser all this other stuff that same kind of approach is done with our main character loki as well as lady loki Mm -hmm. and since we're talking about that last scene right now where Loki is fighting with various and distressing, having conversations and fights with the various possessed people that Lady Loki, for lack of a better name, as we keep calling her, is possessing, um, is straight up a homage to a great movie called Fallen that stars Denzel Washington. And mm. I, I guess a lot of people haven't seen this movie. Most people know it from the Denzel Washington gif where he grabs his chest and then smiles in relief. Oh, that's that movie? Yes, that's this movie. Oh, I feel like that was like any Denzel movie. Right, facts, <laughs> He seems to make those same mannerisms in all his movies. And and saying guarantee. Look up the I guarantee video on YouTube of Denzel. <laughs> it's a classic. I guarantee it. it. Yeah, anyway, uh, that's from this movie Fallen, where Denzel is a cop alongside John Goodman, and they're battling... This fallen de- a fallen angel or demon devil who goes around through the movie possessing people by the power of touch. So any mm-hmm. person that the you know who's possessed when they touch somebody else, the demon jumps into them. And the only mm. way that Denzel knows that it's a demon throughout the movie is the person keeps singing the song. Time is on my side. Yes, it is. And it's a really creepy movie overall. You know, really ill. I think early 90s uh, Denzel. So, you know, good little flick. But that scene is a straight up pays tribute to it with the body jumping, with the different people walking in and being possessed 
by Lady Loki. And then even them, you know, the big dude effing, uh, I almost said effing Denzel up because that's what happens in the movie. <laughs> but no, effing Loki up. Yeah, it's straight up tribute to Fallen. And I really love that because it's, you know, so perfect with the time is on my side, Fallen right. Angel. Which, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, which Loki representing the devil and the Fallen Angel and all that type of stuff. It just, you know, fits in so perfectly. So shout out mm-hmm. to Kate and them. Well done. Yeah. And while we're mentioning the variant Lady Loki, like, we're, again, we're using this as a reference point. This is not our 100% assertion that that is who she is because it's a strong case can be made that that's actually not Lady Loki. Yes. Now, what was discovered is if you watch the, cre- the, the whole credit scene, like, through the first half of the credits, you get to where they express, like, the Dutch version, meaning the, the voiceover version, mm-hmm. the Dutch, the I believe French they show, and they also show Spanish. Yep. And in the Spanish language cast list, meaning those voice actors, they credit, well, in all the other ones, they credit Lady Loki as variant Loki. But in the Spanish language one, they credit her as Sylvie. Mm-hmm. Now, who has Sylvie been? All right. Even deeper than that, um, this is a very quick flash that I only saw watching one of the random YouTube videos. But I think it's in the scene where uh, Mobius and Ravona are speaking, and he signs the R. Renslayer form for her, authorizing about the variant. Yeah, she says R. Slayer. No. no. On the page is Sylvie... Uh, low K son or low K low face son. So Lof- Lofson Lofson, like Loki's real last name. No, like, no, like Loki's son or like, however you would say it where it's Loki's daughter. Oh, like Odinson. Yeah. But like Loki's daughter it, it is. So it's basically Sylvie Loki's daughter is her last name. Got it. Is how it's listed on the variant sheet. Now, as to who Sylvie is, Sylvie in the comic books, at least in the MCU, I mean, in the comic books and uh, yeah, if not six months, both six months, that's whatever. In the comic books, Sylvie is a character who is a normal human being who at one point asked Rard for a lot of weird reasons is floating over the city of Broxton, Ohio, right? Okay. So Sylvie lives in Broxton, normal human being. One day she wakes up and half the time she's speaking in her Asgardian voice, you know, and starts exhibiting powers and shit, and Ray doesn't know why. She goes on to find the rest of the Young Avengers, and she's like, yo, I got powers and stuff too, I want to join up, and starts going by the name of the Enchantress, like the Enchantress is a whole ass another character who is an Asgardian herself, named Amora. Enchantress has had relationships with Thor, Mm-hmm. Uh, I think her sister got with Loki. I think she might have enchanted Loki. But anyway, Enchantress and Sylvie both possess some of the same power sort, I mean, set of being able to enchant people. And that's okay. exactly the words that Loki uses in this episode when he describes what she's doing. Enchanting people, taking over people's minds, twisting them, you know, illusions, all that other type of stuff. That's the short answer of who Sylvie is and who the Enchantress is. Now, um, there's a couple other clues to this, right? All the variant Lokis that we see have black hair. Even in the comments, most of the time when Loki switches from male to female, characters still have black hair. hair. The Loki we see has blonde hair. Other side of the coin, though, the Loki is wearing the broken horn headdress that Mm -hmm. Loki uh, wears in the series Agent of Asgard. The Loki and Agent of Astar doesn't get the broken head horn headdress until he gets into a fight with Thor, gets his ass kicked, and it's very near the end of the series where Loki is about to adopt the um, moniker of God of Stories instead of God of Lies, where they can tell stories and change reality. So it's like on the end of Loki's character growth, at least for... The growth that happened since Kid Loki, where this Loki character has been trying to redeem their name from being the god of evil and always being a villain and always being trapped in the same story, in the same loop of being in a comic book where they always have to play the villain at door. Loki's trying to change out of that, goes through a lot to do it. And that's where we end up with the broken horn Loki. So for her to be Loki, it would... To me, at least, would signify that she is a Loki who's been through it already, which goes along with this idea that she might be 
the other analyst that Ravona is always talking about. And has drawn Ooh. rogue against the TVA because she's tired of their BS. Oh man, if that's true, I mean, and I to- <laughs> and I'm gonna get into it later. But I, I we said breath. before, <laughs> <laughs> we said before we don't trust the TVA. Nah, and I don't trust Ravona as far as I can throw her. So nah. I'm I I'm going to put what you just said in my back pocket because that might be. Very I will true. say Ravona. That that's fucked up. But you know. I will say Ravona's pretty privilege will get her pretty far with me, though. <laughs> Just say <laughs> The pretty privilege of the Flag Smashers wasn't enough for no, you. No, no, but no, but Ravona's Ravona. Like... <laughs> you got to whisper oh that one. Ravona. Ravona. Yeah, there you go. Ooh. All right. Cool, cool. Let's go on to our next theme, which is the rules of time. In this episode, we actually get a lot in the way of science how supposedly time and time travel works, how supposedly timelines work. And I say supposedly because as truth is, as we and we said this, as human beings, we don't really know what the fuck is going on Mm -hmm. when it comes to time travel, if it's even possible, if it even exists. We just have lots and lots of incredible theories Mm -hmm. that seem to make sense depending on which side of the fence you sit on. Yep. So when we just first, just on the most basic of levels, like the, the, the idea of the rules of time and learning about like how the TVA operates comes right in the beginning where we see Loki sitting at the desk and he's supposed to be studying where as, as they've been asking him to do to train up, to understand how the TVA operates. And during that, while he's sitting there, he's harassing Miss Minutes, which is we now at this point, he asks her, what is she? Is she alive? Is she recording him? Is she listening to him? Is she, just a digital representation. What is she? And her response to him was a little bit of both or, or, or kind of both. Mm-hmm. And that's not really a response. Again, Schrodinger's cap. That's neither here nor there. You're just both at the same time. <laughs> but, um, you, you know, we see him harassing Miss Minutes. She escapes into the computer and then she fails him on his quiz. Yes. So, so this leads into a poll that went out on our views from the 616 Twitter handle today can we trust Miss Minutes? Like, I understand her being annoyed by Loki and all that other stuff, but are we going to see Miss Minutes' little attitude change for the worse? Because she was shaping up to be little Miss Karen. I told you this from episode one before I saw her being annoyed. I told you, and I don't even think that, I don't think of her as little Miss Karen. I think of her as just, it's going to get to that point where it's going to be like, I told you, motherfuckers. <laughs> you know, that's like, <laughs> like that Miss Minutes is going to come out like <laughs> Oh, that 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 nice southern accent's gonna come out, like, leave right. Yeah, not, not, yeah. Forget the Paula Dean yeah. and what they're gonna put in somebody else. <laughs> yeah, like, it's gonna be somebody. Oh no, actually, the Paula Dean would be the with the. Be yeah, the it's right gonna be the angry accent. Paula Dean. Ooh. Yeah, it's gonna be that Paula Dean we found out about. Or, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's what that's what I see coming. I don't see okay. Karen. I see the I'm fed up with this. You know, <laughs> <laughs> motherfucking TVA on this motherfucking plane. <laughs> like, yeah, that's when I see it. Whatever, yeah. Hyder would. <laughs> what did they say at the end of Cowboy Bebop? Uh, uh keep it cool or not keep it cool. See you later, Space Cowboy? Yeah, see you later, Space Cowboy. It's be something oh, like okay. that. Get the fuck out of here, Space Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so... <laughs> Then I mean, wait, wait, talk, talk. wait. One Go last ahead. thing on Miss Minutes yeah. on a serious yeah. tip. Her whole mention about you know, am I recording? Am I real? Is also a very deep statement, and also goes back to this idea of Mobius and the Loop. And mm-hmm. there are mad theories floating around right now. One of them that I just mentioned. Um, another one is that Mobius is Loki. And that's why they're both so concerned with getting to see the time lo- uh, keepers. That's why they both love jet skis. That's why mm-hmm. they're both prone to monologues. That's why mm-hmm. Mobius is trying to get Loki to do certain things so that I don't know. You know, that's So you're saying potentially he fits within the first theme of variants. He could be a variant of Loki in a way. And yes, in the first theme and also in the theme of the idea of loops and being trapped and being mm-hmm. a recording. Like we see the recording, I mean, not recording, but the reel to reel in Ravona's office, which is loops, which is plays forwards mm. and backwards, which is time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. There's another thing about movies we're going to get to. Um, I'm over thank here with for, my I'm board right that. now. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but continuing on the rules of time theme, when Loki is studying in the computer on his desk, I, of course, I told y'all, mm-hmm. I'm that guy. I'm the one who zooms in and, and crops and, and, and analyzes and sits there and squints until <laughs> I could read what's on the screen. But I was able to read on the screen. And let me tell you exactly what was shown. It says this. It's actually, remember, it's a quiz, so it's actually a word problem. The quiz goes, Thanos has two apples. He eats both, but realizes he wants more. He goes back in time 20 minutes and eats the apples again. Does this mean the apples will not have existed in the timeline he left? Now, I just started laughing as soon as I saw Thanos. I was like, all right, y'all, y'all, y'all fucked up for that. Because like now that they, they, not only have they told us the Infinity Stones essentially don't matter, these shits are paperweight, Thanos ain't shit. He ain't shit enough to put him in a word problem. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, that was the ultimate disrespect like, to the right. whole phase one to three. Right. Y'all niggas is the word problems. If Johnny ate two apples, so like, you know, they just they just really like pulled him all the way down from whatever loft he was in. But yeah. in that, I noticed that the highlighted answer, which I assume that was going to be Loki's answer, he highlights answer B. <laughs> no, I, just, I, I, I wish there was some way for Thanos to have, you know, seen that part of his future. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, and this is hey, destiny. dog, guess what? You're going to be reduced to a word problem in SAT. Yo, dog, we heard you wanted to be a god. So we... <laughs> Pip your god, right? Yeah. So, oh, my boy. So we put your dog in a god. Bro. Oh, <laughs> okay, back to this word problem. Yeah, so I met, I noticed that Loki highlighted answer B as his answer, but I'm going to read all the, the options. There were three options. Option A. The, the answer would be no, because time is constantly happening. Option B, which Loki, as I mentioned, chose, is, or, or has highlighted anyway, it says, the question doesn't matter because a branch cannot change another branch of time. One branch cannot change another branch of time. Mm. And then the last option is option C, Thanos would have been hungry prior because the grandfather paradox already accounted for the change in matter before it moved. Ah, uh, so the grandfather moved. paradox is basically Bill and Ted's version of time travel. Right. Where now, a- anything you've done affects the present like you already mm-hmm. did it. Yeah. Yeah. That's now, before what, I, yeah. I, I'll, I'll give you some more about the grandfather paradox, but which is your answer, Ben? A, B, or C? One, I just want to shout out Bill and Ted because I loved it as a kid <laughs> when they would be like, yo, remember to put a trash can over that man's head? And then a trash can would appear over that man's head? Because they were like, later on, oh, I'm going to go in the okay. time machine and put a trash can over that man's head, you know? And so then it happened right then. That was like one of the illest uses of time travel I'd ever seen on screen. Um, Loki stalling for time. What's your answer? Yeah, basically, question? because I ain't got no answer. Uh, <laughs> let me see. The- I, think, I, think, I think B was right, at least in this context, because based on what they're saying, like, remember, they're, they are at will just erasing timelines that are considered nexus events they are racing bran- and and branches really they're racing branches from what they consider yeah, the main no, according timeline to, so yes, according to their variation according of time to their to- right according to their rules one branch cannot affect another that's why you're able to delete one essentially without messing up the rest but they also say that time is constantly happening but they're saying that in terms of a branch is constantly happening Right, but which is why if it you let it allow it to just be, it's going to reach a point where you can't change it, and supposedly will crash the universe. Supposedly, which is bullsh- but that's what which I think is bullshit. Yeah, which Ms. says I but, think is bullshit. See, all right, that leads to a question, right? So Thanos goes back in time, eats those two apples. So yes. the Thanos of the future, who has already ate the two apples, is the Thanos of the future still there? But when he goes, He's still there. If, if you believe in in, in option B. The Thanos who ate the apples is his own motherfucker minding his business, eating his apples. He ate them apples. But that's not and what happened. The person happens who went back is somebody in, else. In our in our version of time travel that we've seen, because the Avengers go back in time and they're not there anymore. So they go back in time and mm. start off all these branches that they later clipped. But while they're gone, they are gone. So Thanos goes back in time and eats those apples. The so Thanos in the future isn't there, which uh, see it also depends on like is that part of the sacred timeline? But anyway, the Thanos in the background goes back, eats the apples. The apples being eaten creates a small little branch right there because those apples matter to Thanos in the future. All apples matter. Yeah. So those <laughs> apples matter 
So Thanos of the future is waiting on his apples, and this branch has been created by Thanos in the past. So that's what I mean. I don't, I don't know. All I t- fucked up. I would now. But the, what's the question? Does it? They, do they existed? No, they don't exist because he ate the apples in the past. So they're gone. Yeah, and that creates the branch. But saying that the branch can't, affect, you know, now the branch can't affect something else. You know, like now whatever you do in that branch is that branch. I see everyone. But the apples in, are still eight in branch A. I see everyone in the Twitch chat arguing right now. Facts. What up, twitch.tv slash four old nerds? Facts. I see y'all arguing each other I mean, down right now. Arguing me or Ben, I mean, down. That's I don't why know. You always go to Looper, another great time travel movie. Where oh, I love Looper. I felt like it didn't get enough love. Oh, you know, it's another great one. Um, also, Primer is another great one that people don't know about. That's a. On the low joint, but uh, Looper when he when Bruce Willis says it best, we'll be here diagramming shit with pencils all day if we try and figure this out. Exactly. So fuck so the apples. So that brings us to I got a number. That- How do you like them apples? I mentioned Good the well, grandfather honey. paradox. No, oh I mentioned the grandfather paradox. <laughs> so just to give y'all an explanation of what that is, the grandfather paradox is a paradox of time travel in which. Inconsistencies emerge through changing the past. So one very famous example they give is a person travels to the past and kills their own grandfather before their father or mother is born, which prevents the time traveler from even existing. Yep. And then if that happens, then did they even go back in the past in the first place? And that's why they say a lot of this is, again, why, why the essence of time travel is so effed up and so hard for us to conceptualize Terminator, I'm looking at you, is because of these paradox. Uh, what's the plural paradox? Paradox? But because of the paradox. So it's just also interesting because the idea of this grandfather paradox also gives rise that many, the many variants um, that we, we encounter, like through those many variants we encounter, it's, it's, it's pretty much logically impossible for them to change the past. And Loki uses this version of his understanding of the paradox to ex- to figure out that this uh, lady Loki is hiding in apocalypses. Because, again, if we're using the TVA's rules, they say one branch cannot affect another branch. If a branch gets completely destroyed, it's not going to affect anything else. What he discovers is if you go to a point in time where an apocalypse is going to completely wipe out that timeline... Anything you do leading up to it won't matter. The timeline is going to be destroyed anyway, and it's not going to create a nexus event. See that? Uh, yes, but what you said is all uh, part of the, I guess, paradox in itself too, or not even paradox. Where I think that the TVA is lying, because you're saying that there are branches, but there are no branches until someone else up, right? It's always just one straight line, so. Like, mm-hmm. when the apocalypse event is happening, that is part of the straight line. When Astar Correct. gets destroyed, that's part of the straight line. Ragnarok is part of the plan. Yes. Yeah. So if you go out and hang out before Ragnarok, you're not creating a branch because you're being disguised in the destruction that happens at Ragnarok. But you're not really creating a branch. You see what I'm saying? It's still part of that line. You're just jumping in mm-hmm. and out. So it's still yeah, just and straight that's what, up. And I agree with you. Yeah. And that's why Loki understands it and that's how he's able to realize how to find lady loki and just in that point mobius clarifies that it has to be a doomsday event that is naturally occurring occurring that is sudden has no warning and no survivors i wonder why it has to be naturally occurring and that's why i want to bring it up because he made a point of making he made a point of saying that so i'm like why does it have to be that like it can't be a man when I say naturally occurring, and that's the thing, what's considered naturally occurring? So was the snap naturally occurring? Mm. That was a very intentional action done by, not man, but a supposed God. So, But that's considered natural? They didn't stop that. I mean, what that if, was considered a doomsday event. What about Hiroshima? You know, you could go hang out right in, you know, the town of Hiroshima or Nagasaki and, you know. Right. Bounce. That's a man-made bomb. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. What What is, nat- as you say, what is really considered natural? Or do they even consider these? My thing is, I thought doomsday events is just events where mad people catch the fade. And that's what it seems like when you read, like when you look at all of the different files that Loki has, when they're 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 trolling through 
all of the, the the list of all the different um doomsdays not doomsdays but all the different apocalypse that happening like they all just seem to be just things that just where, where there's death and destruction yeah, so it was like eight hurricanes coming down on that one spot it it's <laughs> it was a hur it's a category eight i believe they said <laughs> which is crazy because the scale only goes to five, five. <laughs> <laughs> And I've been so, in like fours and them joints is nothing to play with. Yeah. yeah so. Ugh. Yeah. Um, but I know I just threw like so many wrenches into everybody's minds right now. But this is what we're working with. This is what happens when you deal with the aspect of time travel. And when you're dealing with this sh- a show like this that is going, that is really diving headfirst into trying to explore these theories and explore these, these themes. Mm-hmm. And you're just going to be confused at points. Yep. That leads us to the next theme, My Own Glorious Purpose. Part of what Loki's favorite opening monologue is when he talks about his, his, his burden with glorious purpose. Loki himself, he believes himself, as we see, to be more clever, more smart, and a step ahead of everybody else. But I feel like we, at least this version, we see him being constantly either proven wrong, ignored, or it results in people realizing that he's lying. Mm-hmm. That being said, he responds, still responds positively when his ego is stroked, particularly like when Mobius refers to him as an expert. Obviously, you're an expert of yourself. And when he is talking about the variant, he always tries to correct everyone and said, the variant is the lesser, right? The lesser Loki, the lesser of me. This goes back to the whole, as as we said on our previous episode, Loki wanted to have the high ground always. Mm -hmm. And it manifests when Loki corrects Mobius when he explains to him the difference between illusion projection and duplication casting. Now, when you read it, like when you hear what he's saying, it kind of basically sounds exactly the same. But so it's just like, is Loki just full of shit? Or, you know, like he just thinks that he's so all powerful and he's just, again, above everybody? Or is there really a difference? There's a slight difference. And I think that slight difference that are coming to play at some point in this series. And it's also one of those things where Loki wants to feel smarter and feel like he knows something about himself that they don't know. You yeah, because they and, seem to and, know everything. Right, and yeah, you should. That would be that's cool that you know more about yourself than the average person. But also, you you are going to miss spots. That's just the nature of the beast. You can't. You can be introspective to a point, right? Mm-hmm. There are going to be things that you just miss, considering you're just too close to the fire, if you will, and. Even though that's also the case, I also believe that Loki is way more interested than he lets on about the inner workings of the TVA. Like, he he does that whole, I didn't really read everything. I think he's read a lot more. I think he mm-hmm. really, truly understands how everything works, the rules, all of that. And the fact that they gave him free reign to, almost free reign to just learn everything and learn how all their, their tools work, all sorts of things. That also goes with the idea of, you know, they define Loki's power set. And then we see the variant Lady Loki, uh, Sylvie, use completely different powers that we've never yeah. seen our Loki use. Like, this Loki has a telekinesis of some sort. Like, he 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 brings that Roomba from across the room when he's fighting the Hoss mm-hmm. guy in, in Rock's cart. Yep. But that... I'm not sure if that falls under the category of it could have been an illusion. But yeah, but what I'm talking about is the enchanter's woman is enchanting people. We've never seen our Loki take people's minds like that, jump from no. body to body. No. Mm-mm. And and it just also, though we haven't seen it, it's like, wouldn't Loki potentially capable of it, right? Because he uses magic. And what is the true limit of magic besides what you know? But see, that is the point. Loki has very limited magic. You know, Mm. when confronted by a true magic user like Doctor Strange, he gets served immediately. He's a joke Mm. because all he has is a couple of illusions that he relies on over and over again. Even when Loki dries himself off an episode, is he really drying himself off or do you just see him as dried off? That is true. Is that an illusion or he's doing something else? Right. Yeah. So Loki has a very limited set of tricks and he's not a real magic user. He's not on the level... Of a strange, a Scarlet Witch, or more do, you know, even a, a Wong. You know, Wong. But is could putting, he be? Is it just a matter of be. him not yes. having the knowledge? Yes, and this female Loki might have the knowledge, or just might be something else entirely. Okay. Yeah. 
In this episode also, similar to what I shared previously, Mobius expresses that Loki has an insecure need for validation Mm -hmm. and is exactly related to what I mentioned about Loki being born of his own. Like he he uses this term about, oh, people shouldn't have choice because, you know, it's they have their shame and uncertainty and inadequacy. He is focusing, excuse me, he's reflecting the same thing. He, again, his his need, as we say, his need for validation, his need to be accepted, to be loved, whatever, that affects his choices and how he moves in life. His, also, his need to determine his own fate is something yes. that, you know, because since he was a child, he has been told, this is what you will be. You know, mm-hmm. first he's abandoned by his father. Then Odin comes and gets him, brings him back to the Golden Palace, you know, silver spoons his ass for those who know the 80s. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just called him uh, Willis. <laughs> but you're talking about Willis, yeah. But, um, you know, Loki is always, and then Odin tells him that, you know, both of you are born to be kings, but Thor, are you the one. You know, so his My whole blonde life. My blonde-haired, blue-eyed devil. Yeah, that blonde-haired, blue-eyed devil, you know. Your half-white ass is, no, that ain't going to work over here, <laughs> bro. You know what I mean? So, Loki is always been put into, a, you know, a box. And so he's yeah. constantly trying to get out of that box and break out of it. And once again, like I said, that goes back to Agent Astar, where Loki is tired of being the villain in everyone's story. Mm-hmm. That that's actually a very profound thought when you think about it. But oh, that... oh. oh, well, I could go on on yeah. that because yeah, you definitely Please. yeah, you should definitely check out Agent Astar, where it really dives into this. And I was talking about this earlier, how, especially in comic books, because they are a form of material where it goes on, the story just keeps going and going and going. And they always mm-hmm. need new readers to come in and pick it up at a certain point. Like the MCU is so far avoided that because they're like, nah, F it. You got to have to go watch 15 movies, dog. Or you can jump in on Loki and we'll kind of, you know, catch you up to stuff. But you're going to have a lot of bad story that you just don't miss. Comics, mm-hmm. for the most part, don't do that. Like right now in Edsman, the mutants are on this crazy wild stuff, doing all this stuff. And at some point, they're going to go back to being the small group of feared and hated mutants that everyone knows. Because they want, you know, unless the MCU introduces them in this way. And then they might stay this mm. way for a long time. Because right. they always want you to come in, especially now that MCU is so popular. Like Tony Stark looks like Robert Downey Jr. in the comments now. because right, with- the how they changed... Um- Fury. Yep. Even how to look Loki like Sam in the comics went from being the villain all the time to having this storyline where he's fighting that and trying to become more of an anti-hero, a god of mm-hmm. stories. Because people who watch the movie start reading the comics are like, yo, wait a minute, this ain't you know the time I know. So that's the problem with comics and being trapped in a story and always being forced to play a role. And that's why Loki is going against it in this show. That's why he went in against it at Agent of Asgard. And it also just goes into that whole thing they were talking about, like, faith and what you believe. And, Mm -hmm. like, um, Mobius sits there and talks about, I believe in the TVA, so this is what it is. Like He's like, we're all born in the chaos. Once again, going back to Loki, right? We're all born in the chaos, and we just try and make order of it. We try and make sense of it. So we tell ourselves all kind of tall tales, whatever, to make sense of it. I'm just happy I was born into this. This gives me my purpose. This is my glorious purpose, you know, so mm-hmm. I'm just going to go with it. But we mm-hmm. know Mobius is lying already. Once again. He's been lying a lot, actually. <laughs> once, who else lies a lot? Right? And it's duplicitous because, you know, how he tells when he's when he's leaving Ravana's office, Ravana's like, yo, if this shit don't work out, I can't save you, Holmes. And she, he goes, look, if shit go left. I'm going to delete that nigga myself, Mm -hmm. talking about Loki. And then when he steps out of Loki, come on, buddy. Like, But he also tells Loki the truth in a way, right? He's like, look, it's it's one of two things. He says, you you can see that I feel like you're the scared little boy Mm -hmm. that needs help, or I'm just telling you what I want to tell you so I can just get what I need done. Yep. But it's so, and also in the way that he sits there and talks to Loki, and he's like, yo, I believe this, I believe that, you know, this is the way. You know, and then in Ravona's <laughs> office, he's over there like, yo, fam, I don't know. You know, can we have some change? You know? Well, well, he still feels like like dedicated to his cause. Like Ravonna is, is more so like, yo, this don't feel like this is going to work, fam. And he's more like, yo, give me a chance. But he's also like, maybe people don't want to play the role anymore. 
But to Loki, true. he tells them, play the role. This is true. You know, so he's doing and role. saying two different things. Know your role and shut your mouth. But <laughs> on the other side, he's turning heel on them, you know? Ooh, Ooh. you like that. You like that. Oh, my gosh. Moving on <laughs> to the next theme, which is existence is chaos, as mentioned um, did Mobius say this? Um, and, and also slash two things can be right at the same time. This is the theme. So Loki tried as, as, and this is during, <laughs> this is after Loki gives his, his analogy, his, his live analogy of, of how Loki, the lesser is hiding in these apocalypses. Mm-hmm. And he uses that salad and the salt and the pepper to explain what's going on. And Loki tries to say, and during this conversation, excuse me, during this conversation, Mobius um, talks about, you know, a little bit about the TVA. And Loki tries to say the explanation for how the TVA came about is absurd. Mm-hmm. Like he says, oh, you, you know, these magical lizards and all this other stuff. But very daftly, Mobius encounters and says he could say the same about how Loki came about. Mm-hmm. Because Loki, what, he came out from this, this sky god or this thunder god, <laughs> this golden god, whatever you want to call Odin. And from a magical place called Asgard that has all this stuff and he was a frost giant. Like, it sounds absurd. And it just reminds me of the understanding of, of regardless of what culture, ethnicity, or whatever you're, you're from, ethnicity and creation, excuse me, existence and creation stories always sound like cap to somebody else. Yeah, it, it's exactly what Mobius says. You know, it's all chaos. Life is short. We don't understand anything. And so we tell ourselves these stories to make ourselves feel better about it. And also, if you are of a particular existence, it makes sense for you to accept it and just generally not question it. Obviously, people do. Yep. But a lot of what Mobius is saying is like, especially, again, he's, he has this double speak he does with Loki. He's like, yo, play your role. Don't question it. It is what it is. And then we see him do the opposite. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. And it, Also, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, it just goes to this whole thing that, you know, the TVA seems to be a cult, you know, at the very least. And... It's very cultish. Yeah, very cultish because they don't have a God, so they're not really a proper religion, but they definitely have a belief system and they believe in this stuff and they got so much propaganda. And you see even the propaganda, it's really reinforced in that scene in the hurricane when they're in the rock song. Well, not, I mean, Rock's Tart. Rock's Cart. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is Rock song. But mm-hmm. anyway, in Rock's Tart, we see mad propaganda and it's this whole thing of this corporation type of, you know, thing which we're looking at like the amazons of course comparing mm-hmm. it to the rot songs and mm-hmm. so we have this corporate environment which the tva just fits right in right rock song is a variant of tva there it is and so and vice versa yep oh variants variants so uh in the tva like even the rules and this is something i peep personally right when loki and him are having that conversation in the cafeteria there's signs about keep quiet, eat, you know, all that type of stuff. And they start yammering because Loki right away is the chaos. As much as Mobius, as we said, you know, acts like he believes in all this stuff. When he's around Loki, he's right away, nah, F it, you know, let's go wild. But mm-hmm. another thing that bugged me, and I'm not, my in my head, I'm like, okay, it's because Loki is there. Is there is an armed Minutemen standing behind them far off in the yes. cafeteria. I noticed that. Yeah. Like- it reminded me of when you're doing visitation in a facility yeah. and there's always armed guard, guard standing by watching. Why yeah. is there an armed guard in a cafeteria? Unless it's there for Loki, there, you know, this place just is, it more and more seems to be on, you know. Giving you prison vibes? <sighs> Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. In that understanding of existence being chaos, you made a good point just about how how Loki moves. He he's he's chaotic himself, right? He mm-hmm. he lives and, and breathes on the chaos, even like especially when he feels or knows that he's right about something. You see how he was acting when they went to Pompeii. He was like 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 Mobius was all cautious, like okay, let's just you know do something little to see if it, it was going to disturb the timeline. Loki just jumped out the window, was yelling and and talking. First of all, d- proclaiming in Italian. Or or whatever language you, I think it's Italian, Roman but Greek. Uh, pro- proclaiming in another language about how he's from the future and the mountains and the volcano's gonna blow up and letting the goats out, like he just went off the wall, and that is his that's his mo, right? And that's what what uh, other people also essentially say that he is. He is just there for chaos. He is just there to bring 
Uh, he's just there to mess shit up, essentially. And a lot of times he just feeds right into that, but then we see these glimpses of him fighting against that. That was also Loki just uh, rebelling against what he'd just been told that, mm -hmm. you know, nothing matters. What, and what did I say? Everything is He's faded. Yep. Defiant and rebellious. Yeah, definitely. Very much so. And yeah. also it shows that Loki does know some languages. Like we surmised last week, it's just Mongolian. I, I think he does. And that's, let me go back. I think yep. he does know Mongolian because he was about to respond to them before the TVA, ah. the time cops came to grab him. Like he, like they, they was like, who are you? And he said, I, and then got cut off. True, so, true. Okay. So maybe he understood and he just was still about to speak in yeah. English anyway, but. <laughs> F y'all Mongolians. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow. Wow. Maybe Loki ain't black. Maybe he's just a racist there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, he over here talking to the Greeks or Romans or whatever, you know, but. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Mongolians? Nah, y'all don't get oh no Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, even though that was so wild, disrespectful, you know, what he told all them, because then they got Pompeyed, you know, immediately Ooh. afterwards. And, like, yeah. More they, more in this existence is The chaos. Mongolians is done, though. Bad, bad to that point. We, we have confirmed oh, yeah. that the Mongolians was wiped from existence last week. But again, they don't know that they were wiped. Like, they got wiped. They and, don't know. And the thing is, they also. I, it, it's it's shaky because did they get wiped or did that branch of Mongolians get wiped and the real Mongolians who never saw Loki are but still there? But who is real and who's there's no such thing as real or Facts. fake? It's that branch, as you say, and, and that who, dude who is supposed to be in, there. That dude who was in the TVA, uh, the Goldman Sachs son, he got erased in the TVA, so it wasn't like he was back home getting no. So that's a you know uh, that was like the true death. I, I, I still for him. don't think. And again, we could I, this could be proved very, very wrong by the end of this series. I still don't think when these timelines get get reset that the people even realize what's happening. I think it's just a it's something that just happens. Like, I don't think there's oh. this this tsunami crashing on them. No, okay, no, it's not. Here's my new theory after watching episode two. Right, we have a timeline going along. How uh, we can see this, right? It's going straight up, right? And mm -hmm. then branches happening off, like Loki see Mongolian see Loki. Right, branches with these Mongolians and Loki. Mm -hmm. Original timeline, both of these are going along. They come along, up, maybe erase those Mongolians. F it, right? But they erase a radius of you know area around it till there is nobody who's seen Loki or anything that wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to be in the normal timeline. Nothing no that would affect would would cause the branch to continue to exist. Yep. So branch drawn in, but just that little space. But all the while, both of these are going at the same time. You know, keep it moving. Same so rate, yeah. the rest of the world does not experience a tsunami effect. This throws to my one of my real theories of time travel is that like if someone was going into the past right now and changing the past, none of us would know it. Not at all. Because the if you use we, this, this, these rules, absolutely not. Yeah, we would just think this is how it was. Mm -hmm. Like that's why people talk about the Mandela effect and things of that nature, where they're like, "Oh no, you know, somebody's been changing the oh, past." The, oh, what's the Mandela effect? The Mandela effect goes to this idea that a lot of people seem to think that Nelson Mandela died in prison or sometime in the 1980s, and Nelson Mandela didn't. Nelson Mandela was released from prison and went on to live. I think it's in the oh, early 2000s. Like a collective misremembering of events? Yes, or like the fact that the books are called the Bernstein Bears, or the Baron, but they're actually the Berenstein. But everybody who I, me personally, I thought it was Bernstein. Um, there's no Jiffy peanut butter. It's something like that, right? There's Jippy and Jiffy and Jiff, but no Jiffy. J-I-F. Yeah, there's J-I-F, but there's no Jiffy. It's a lot of little things like this that people remember. And I've seen videos on it where dudes like, you know, this one, you know, YouTube man's had a car, a Ford car where he was like, yo, this car got caught in it because half of the Ford was like a regular Ford and the other half was some weirdness. Okay. You know? Yeah. And I was mm. like, all right, whatever, dude. Someone yeah. came along but, and fucked oh, up your car. But I have heard of that phenomena and yeah. I, I just didn't realize that that was the name of it. But yeah, yeah. They, that it's particularly like very traumatic events happen that groups like like large groups of people we're talking about thousands to millions mm -hmm. and so on remember certain points of time or life one way but that's not How truly happened. what happened yep and so yeah. if somebody was actually going in back in time like right now let's say if someone went back in time and saved tupac happy birthday tupac 
all of us would just suddenly be like, oh, yeah, Tupac's always been alive. What are you talking? Somebody killed Tupac, right. you know? Like, what? No, nah, nah, man. You ain't heard his 50th album. You know what I mean? It, that's how. His 50th, yeah. yeah. Dog, if Tupac could live five more this years, he would have 50 in albums. Like, and he would have been at, yeah. at 100 or something. If, if Tupac lived to 50, it. he'd have a thousand albums. You know, I don't want to know. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. 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 I get you. I get you. Yeah. But, but that that's a great segue into the this this back to this theme because this also is is particularly why the TVA operates in which they operate. So as when Loki's being quizzed by Miss Menace back in the beginning, wh- he expresses that when a Nexus event has redlined, it can no longer be reset, meaning there's a certain amount of time the Minutemen and, and, and folks have to reset the timeline before it's irretrievable and just continues on its own. And but again, the, the, the TVA has a limited time to reset those branches or supposedly all reality collapse. And they say that, so in essence, the existence of a branch of reality will bring chaos. I don't think that's 100% true. I still think they're, 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 do you believe that to be true, Ben? All right. In the comic books, going back to the comic book source material, at one point, the secret wars happened where the multiverse started collapsing due to a lot of things like uh, what was basically called the multiversal order was broken. So like the the system that, the system, as what is referred to, the system is broken. Mm-hmm. So the system mm-hmm. that held them all in place was broken, and so they started crashing into each other. And so okay. because of that, they started going to war. Once you know the fan- the Mister Fantastic of this world figured out what was happening, the Mister Fantastic of this world figured out what was happening. And both of them was like, "I got to save my world." You know, it became a problem when those two worlds crashed oh, together, and so that led it. to the secret wars. So. Yes, I do believe that what they're saying is true because one, go back to the Loki and Mongolian saying if they don't show up, Loki's there, Loki stays in the past and irrevocably changes that timeline to be a different one where he probably becomes King Loki or some dumb shit. He's got the Tesseract, <laughs> you know. King of space. Yeah, King of space. You know what I mean? So he's got all that in that world. And so, yeah. plus the knowledge of how he failed. So, yeah, those are going to be two separate and distinct timelines. What happens when Loki of this world realizes that? It's like, now nah, I'm going back to get them Avengers who F me up in that other world. A problem. Chaos. Okay. And then what happens when that Loki keeps doing shit with the Tesseract, <laughs> ju- you know, and causing right, other branches? All this is predicated on chain reactions. Yes. That one thing happens and someone's going to say, oh, fuck no, and then... Do something to to prov- to counteract, and then it just keeps going haywire. And eventually, Thanos ends up in a word problem. <laughs> I mean, that's yo. I'm telling you, I just need to see that. Like when, when my man fast forward a little further, you know, because he's like, oh, and Loki this, in the in the movie room. Yeah, when he's like, this is <laughs> destiny. His life. When he's like, this is destiny fulfilled. And then they yeah. fast forward a little further. He's like. The fuck? <laughs> they show his they, first. They gotta show him getting his neck chopped. Yeah, up no, because that's when he was like, "Yeah, this is destiny fulfilled." Like, good While he job. He's trying to make some plantains. You gotta you gotta show that. But first, he felt that. Then... You know, he was like, "Yes, I pissed these mm. niggas off enough where they came and killed me. Like, I did my job." You know. But then, if he just mm. fast forward a little further, he'd be like, "The fuck." <laughs> Sucks to be you. (laughs) This used to be my playground, fam. No, no, no. During that conversation (laughs) that Loki's having in the cafeteria where Loki asks Mobius, well, what happens when the timekeeper's job is done? Like, what the fuck have they been doing this whole time? Mobius says uh, that everything will come together and there will be order at the end of time and everyone will leave. (laughs) Right, right. And then... Here, here's the thing about it, before I continue this this phrase. The thing about this is it makes me nervous because what do you mean order? Is that just the end? Is that death? Are you just basically saying that's the end of the universe? End scene, roll the credits, like no one's existing? What does that mean, order at the end of the universe? Or does time just keep going on infinitely? Like what does that actually mean when you say every... Because the way to me, and, and maybe I'm morbid, but the way that Mobius expressed it, he goes, everyone comes together in or you know and everything is in order it reminded me of like everyone's up in heaven somewhere because we all got snapped out of existence like everything was done Mm -hmm. it's like the last episode of lost when you know after all that time they were sitting in this orderly church or something 
I like Lost. Don't at me in the comments. Um, I still love it. Anyway, yeah, it just smells like pure BS to me because what mm -hmm. they're saying is that no one along this sacred timeline would ever do anything else. I'm, I guess it works. If, no, I mean, <laughs> see, once again, I mean, it's like, it, I, because it's like, if time is all laid out, like we said, like, if, let's say the time uh, keepers are reading a comic book of the MCU, right? Yes. And then at certain points in this comic book, there's something like, yo, what the fuck? Like, the comic book keeps changing mm -hmm. because somebody in this comic book keeps messing it up. Mm -hmm. So then they rewrite the comic book to make it how they want it. Mm -hmm. And then the comic book is done, right? So right. if the comic book is done after they finally rewritten it the way they want it and the comic book's mad long and people keep doing all this stuff, so they have to keep rewriting it and keep doing it. But they finally got the comic book the way they want it, right? Right. Then that means they can still read the comic book at any time. But the people in the comic book are still going through the timeline like normal. So oh. there could be a point where they finish their job. Right. And what does that mean for us? We're done? I mean, and it no, it means eons, exactly. So. It mean, no, no, it means it, it, because we don't know the comic book's being rewritten, right? What? Right. What it means for us is that our lives are, you know, ordered. You know, we are written in this comic book the way someone else wanted it to be. Okay, got it. You know, and that's what yeah. Loki is resisting. And and he resists when he's having this conversation because he says only order. Like, that's, that's what we get at the end. Mm -hmm. No chaos sounds boring. Yep. Prototypical Loki. But... And... Go ahead. Yeah, I going back to jail hall, actually, the prison, I had it, one of the illest conversations there on this very subject. Because this is something I've thought about since I was a very little kid. I used to have this weird theory about crossing the street and what it would mean for your future. And, you know, whether that was, you know, branch timelines, you know, like this is something I've always thought about. But a friend of mine, while we were a lot, could not accept that his life was, that everything happened for a reason. Right? Okay. It's... It's a problem because people want things to happen for a reason, but they want to be in control of their own lives. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much impossible to reconcile one with the other. Because if everything's happening for a reason, then your choices have to happen for a reason. Mm -hmm. You're not making these choices, you know, because the world has to happen, right? There's so many things that have to happen together to make everything happen for a reason. Your individual choices can't mess up that. You are not the star of this story. You know, the star of the story is the universe and the whole collective, right? So you're saying also is there such thing as when people say, well, they don't really make choices in life. They just kind of float on. You're saying they're not really floating. I, they already have a predetermined path. The best way I've ever seen it said or one way that helps me with it is like the choices we make in life are reacting to our lives, you know, to the, uh, to the now. So we're reacting. We're not creating. No, what we are like. Really, what and what the person said is like you only have what is it like you can have acceptance in a moment you're in, you can have enjoyment or the moment you're in, or you can try and change the moment you're in. Okay, you know what I mean. But you like the mo. It's like we're dealt a hand of cards and we have to play the hand of cards. Is how it works. You know that's how your life is kind of. But there's someone who is sitting. There's the pit boss looking down at the whole casino of everybody playing cards. All of these metaphors. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> you know, at any moment can be like, nah, this person needs to lose. This person over here needs to win. And then you got to react to how that happens, you know? Yeah. Because they see the whole plan and we don't. You know, that's what I think. I think that's, it's the surrendering part that people have a problem with. You know, it's the surrendering to a higher power and saying there is something out there guiding but then people want it, you know, it's that it's it's how people want things both ways, you know, the cake and eat it too. Because people want to believe, they want to have faith. But having faith means that you're believing in something bigger than you, something that is ordering this all. Yeah. You know? And that's very religious type of thinking, yeah. right? Yeah. Spiritual, and also rela religious, all of them, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And also related to the 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 last point of this of this theme of two things can be right at the same time and existence is chaos. Loki makes a profound statement where he says, and and, and, it's, and it's only profound just because it's just so it's so recognizable. No one bad is ever truly bad. 
and no one good is ever truly good. Mm-hmm. There's no such, and also similar to the point you always make, Van. I mean, mm-hmm. about these stories, like, and especially when you see, when you when you watch MCU, even, yep. and you see villains, quote unquote, that seem very one dimensional. You can't really seem to get into it, or you're not really that interested because that's just someone without flavor, someone without true character. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a good villain, quote unquote, is one that has some gray areas. Is yep. one that you can maybe ride with and be like yo i actually he, he his, his he may not be wrong or she may not be wrong um lex luther is a good one for me i'm just like i don't think lex is all the way wrong so and that uh, that goes manifest- both ways it's the same way like how pe- a lot of people look at superman as the boy scout and don't mess with him because they don't think he has any flaws mm-hmm. while people love batman all day because that man got more flaws than you know, Tony Stark, same way. You know, and and to the people who say I'm hating on Tony, once again, I've been reading Tony Stark comic books for. You know, that's like that's my dog. I everyone, I know, and that's another thing. Everyone thinks you have it out for Tony. The first of all, the tweets y'all are hilarious. Yes. That tweet about Ben, I mean, someone said they're in the small world after all. <laughs> line the line for that ride, and Ben, I mean, says something like. Like Tony Stark is a genocidal <laughs> maniac or something like that. And scumbaggery. Like, There's I'm different just, levels of right, scumbaggery. I'm just trying to eat my churro or whatever. But like, like, like the, the tweets are hilarious. But Ben I mean does not hate Tony Stark. No, I love him. Like literally, Iron Man was like one of the first comic books I've read. I talk about how I was a kid reading the story about this man being drunk in a blizzard and selling his coat so he could get another bottle. And it changed my life. You know, where I was like, I don't need to drink, one. And two, I need to read comic books. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't go down that path. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, liquor can get bad, you know? And I love comics. So, yeah, I love Tony Stark. And that's why I love him. And that's why I point out these things. Because he is such a morally great character. And that's what yeah. makes him so great. Yeah. And also, like, again, rounding out this point, my, my new AKA is actually a riff off of the, the theory of Schrodinger's cat. Yes. So if you haven't heard that, I'll explain what that is. That's a, a hypothesis or theory that is in a, a supposed experiment where someone, like, there's a box that's sitting on a table. And a scientist says, you know, there's a cat inside of there. And they ask the person, is that cat alive? Now, you don't hear, there's nothing in there that expresses that, you know, you don't hear any sounds, Mm -hmm. you don't see anything, you don't smell anything, you can't really tell. But you know for a fact there's a cat in there, but you don't know if it's alive. And the idea goes that the cat that's in that box, and I'm I'm simplifying way down, Mm -hmm. but the idea goes that that cat is both alive and dead in that box. Yes. Because there's nothing that you can use or see or, or smell or whatever, touch to verify that the cat even is in there, but you're told it's in there and you're told that the cat can be both alive and dead. Yep. Two things can two things can be true at the same time, and it's true. Like if and, and and this also deals a lot of with a lot with like faith and belief, which is what we're gonna get to next, which is the last theme. But what do you believe is going on in there? Mm-hmm. And if w- what one person believes is it also true of the another person? Yes. And it's also uh, goes into the whole idea of the fact that we live in a world that is pretty much illusion. As yeah. Loki does, because we live in a world that is created of particles that on their smallest level all are contain the same everything. You know, things should not, me and Tatiana should not be talking. We're not separate. Everything is one. But because of our perception, we see the world as I'm here, you're there, there's a table mm-hmm. in front of me, I'm talking to this microphone but all of this stuff are made of the same substance, you know, at the smallest level of quartz and neutrons, whatever you want to break it down to. So it's all illusion and it's all perception of how we yeah. see the world. And and all perceptions of Loki can be true at the same time. B-15, Mumi Musaku, she says, I don't want anyone out there to forget who you are mm-hmm. when addressing Loki wearing that variant jacket, calling him a cosmic mistake. But Loki was also told that he's necessary to make heroes better. And his his role is to essentially make other people be their greater selves. So are you a, a mistake if you have a role? You can't be, right? So two things true at once. And that leads to another question that I saw people bring up this week. How are the Avengers not at fault, right? Once again, because... Because they fucked it up. They, right, they're the ones who fucked it up. Well, because the whole Hulk situation. Yeah, Loki, down would, Loki would never escape 
and would never even be in that position if not for them time traveling. But them time traveling was part of the sacred time, supposedly as decreed by the timekeeper. So they maybe they were supposed to fuck up, but Loki was not supposed to pick up the Tesseract. I guess so. But him picking up the Tesseract is what leads them to go back in time further, which was all supposed to happen in. Oh, so what was actually wrong? And that's why something is awry. Yes, because if that's true, then that means when they went back in time, everything that they affected, like meeting his dad, you know, Tony meeting his own dad and talking to his own dad should have been enough for a branch, I think, in some way or another. (laughs) You know, that would have been a huge branch that goes, ooh, that would have been a huge Because there's branch. no way for Steve, and that's the thing, any minor change, like they say, the butterfly flat, you know, any minor change, like his dad, unless they're going with the idea that Tony was always there, because before that, his dad never had that conversation. So he never took five minutes out of his life. Like there's a, man, just one of the crazy example um, in my own life. Oh God, I cannot remember my homie's name right now. Her name is slipping my mind. She's a world famous artist now, right? Um, works for Converse, all this other stuff. But I've known her for years through Facebook and stuff, right? But we'd never met in person, right? One day I was interviewing some people in New York City. And then I, after the interview, I stopped and talked to my mans on the phone for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I can't remember how long. Get off the phone, hop on the train, get on the wrong train, get off at a stop. And my homie gets off at the same stop on this train and we're walking towards each other. Right? Mm -hmm. First time we ever meet in person. So the amount of things that had to happen for that to happen, you know what I mean? We're so precise, right? So if Tony talks to his dad, his whole life changes. Whether or not the the future, anything. Because his the timing of everything is off from there. Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's a mm-hmm. huge branch. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think Kane's behind it all, and he just worried about the timeline that keeps him in power. Yeah. And finally, <laughs> in themes, <laughs> finally in themes, trust and belief, uh, just to bring it back to that Schrodinger's cat illustration, like I said, I, I've simplified it way, way down, mm-hmm. but that 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 idea or that that theory also also deals with the idea of, of, of belief, and faith and all this other stuff because within that that thought experiment, um, you wouldn't know whether the cat was alive or dead unless you lifted and opened the box, right? You wouldn't know for sure mm-hmm. until you open that box. That cat could be both all this stuff. And and what do they say? A lot of stuff is you have to see it to believe it. Yep. Um, and you see a few characters here expressing different w- viewpoints. So Mobius himself, like when 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 Loki is questioning him about. How, why he believes in the TVA so, so, so bad and all this other stuff. Moby says, I don't get hung up on belief. I just accept what is. The TVA is my life and it's real because I believe it's real. Mm-hmm. Now he's believing that it's real sight unseen in a way, right? Or maybe it's seen because he's sitting there working in it. But is this all a construct? Is this all just a simulation, as we like to say? Or is this akin to what we say about things like religion. Like, you you believe it because that's what you believe to be right in your heart, in your perception. It's both of those. Religion is more, religion and, you know, the construct. Religion is part of the construct that teaches us to accept the world the way it is. You know? The religion is one of the things that tells us this is the world, and so this is why we see the world the way it is. I have often think that, like, it's like the education and religion and everything in over thousands of years has limited human beings to see the world the way it is instead of seeing the world like we should see it of this, you know, like I'm talking about of an all unified idea. We're all one people, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, deeper than that, we're just all everything, you know, all is one, you know, and but because we're taught, we are taught the matrix, basically. You know, the mm. matrix is ingrained in our brain over thousands of years instead of so we don't see it. Can I just say on this episode, I feel like there's a lot of people passing the blunts right now because <laughs> a lot of the stuff we're saying, and again, this this goes back to what we said about like that conversation between Loki and Mobius. Like, 
one well, person's like the things you're saying sound so absurd and and out of out of this world but it's just like is it really that out of this world well it's so well it's so wild because like a lot of these things are just things that i've just personally have been in my head since i was a kid like even the faith mm. versus belief is one of the things that i used to get onto american gods that was actually one of the major that was the major theme of season two that we didn't actually, you know, finish, but that was the wow. major theme was mm-hmm. faith versus versus belief because this is something I've had in my head for a long time. I'm not gonna give too much more of that away because I'm still using that. But yeah, <laughs> IP personal IP. Yeah, yeah but yeah. trust me, I could go on and on about faith versus belief and the differences between the two. And like you telling to people to trust you. Loki is asking that of a lot of people. The very, the very person who is just known as the the universe's biggest liar is constantly telling people to trust him. And even Mobius mentioned that he says, "Why are the people you can't trust always saying trust me?" Mm. Which it happens all the time. Niggas. <laughs> Mobius mentions. See, Loki is that... definitely black. Sorry, can't trust him. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. Uh, Mobius uh, says I'm that Loki, of, you know, says that Loki believes in himself enough for the both of them. That he believes in, he believes in himself. Again, this is also egotistical, but it's also just part of this trust and belief understanding. Loki even says at one point, "I know I have to earn your trust, and I will." When they're at the Rocks Cart Warehouse, and uh, B fifteen will really lay Loki disguised as B fifteen. Do you really believe you're working for yourself and not the TVA? Mm. And again, this is all clues again to what's really going on under the veil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's start closing out with just talking about about the characters as we've been calling her Lady Loki, or in the credits they they refer to her as the variant played by Sophia Di Martino. We already expressed how she may be Enchantress. She may be just, again, another comic book version of Loki. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, 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 this episode discovered, like, despite the fact that everyone just kept saying he, 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 this wasn't actually a she. An underestimation that Loki, that, that actually reads right into what Loki says about underestimating, that people are having these perceptions and preconditioned notions about what the variant could be, but it ended up being somebody totally different. Yep. Uh, but for people who read the comments, they were definitely waiting for this because, you know, the Lady Loki of the comments is just another form of Loki and it's not like a variant like that. And it's, they're definitely not yeah. opposed to each other. It's just the same one. There right. are Lokis who are opposed to the Loki that we know and love, though. And I do believe and we're going to see This might be one of them. Well, no, no, not. No, there's going to be more. This ain't the okay. one yet. Yeah, this ain't the. Well, well, this might be one of them. And I say that just because when they're having their banter in the Rocks cart, and and Loki refers to her as Loki. Loki, she says, "I don't like that. Don't call me Loki." Mm-hmm. And she just uses the name of the person she's she's inhabiting. At Randy. The Randy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, which leads me to think that she is the enchantress and not Loki. But she also says, "If anyone's the copy, it's you." You know, <laughs> you're the clone. Yeah, you're just the like clone. the Marvel twins. You're the yeah. clone. <laughs> Uh, I know Loki's powers have been manifested and his, and just his motif has manifested with the color green. But when the camera pans forward or zooms in rather to to the to Lady Loki in her hood and she reveals herself, her hands are glowing green, which is the same mm-hmm. color as the Time Stone, and she's dealing and and fucking up time in in massive ways as we are going to see in this episode and we'll continue to see. So I want to know, like, w- was that also an intentional connection made there? I'm not sure. I think that's more of an intentional connection to Loki's green energy because it also shows up whenever she's doing her falling and switching from people. And Mm -hmm. when she touches someone's head, it's reminiscent of the vision when he was touching people's head in WandaVision and waking them up. So it might be something that's like, because one theory is that all the TVA agents are actually people who have been, are variants who have been forcibly constricted into the TVA. I don't really go with that one yet, but there are okay. some ideas. Yeah, there are some <laughs> ideas towards it because when we see uh, C one thirty, I think her name is the Dread Minutemen, when she's been snapped out of C twenty, C twenty. Okay, look, it's a lot of numbers here. Um, she's over here talking about I want to go home, I want to go home, and it's real, mm-hmm. it's real, it's real. Like she's seen something or has had her eyes open to something. Mm. But I don't know, you know that. 
That's yeah. still a shaky one. Yeah, it goes with the whole Loki and Mobius are the same person, which I think is an ill idea, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yep. We, we do see that, at least we see the very beginnings of her plan where she uses a series of temp pads. Those are the, the, the I'm calling the temporal iPads, yep. essentially, that all of the, the agents and people use in the TVA. She uses a bunch of them as well as the, all of the research charges she stole. I, there's there's at least 50 of them. because I Oh, 42. I, 42 specifically? It, that it, you see in that one shot. I saw that in, yeah, which um, someone mentioned that in a video. And it is, they counted 42. And 42 might be a reference to the Hitchhiker's Drive to the Galaxy, where the secret of the universe was revealed to be 42. 42. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the secret to so, life is 42. She uses this <laughs> system to concoct a way to bomb the sacred timeline. And what she ends up doing is activating them all at once and sending them all at once through time doors to different points of time and space. Mm hmm. Uh, and, and different planets, areas, zones, ev everything. She does it all at once. Is her plan to... Well, it's twofold, right? You can say her plan is try to to create and also in some ways erase multiple timelines at once. Because my thing is, the point of a reset charge is to reset a timeline, right? Mm -hmm. So Or erase it, essentially, right? But when you see it go back, you see branches grow. Now, they're growing because she's erasing something at a certain point of time, and it's creating a nexus event. Is, that, is my understanding correct? All right. Uh, yeah, because like you said, the, these things are meant to erase branches, right? But by dropping them into all these random points, or not random, to specific points specific. in time and specific places like Asgard, like nowhere, the the star of the celestial who is like dead, like Niflheim, Niflheim, the realm of the dead in Asgard, where Hela was, where banished, Hela to. was banished to, Vormir, uh, where the Soul Stone resides, Vormir, Sakar, the trash planet that the Grandmaster stand, stays on, Thanos' homeworld, Titan, Hala, the Kree homeworld, Hala, Xandar, Hala, Hala. Nova Core homeworld, like, and and obviously there, there's a bunch, it, there's a list of a bunch of places yeah. in. In, on, on Earth, but yeah, this all over the universe. Yeah, so what I'm assuming after watching it a couple times and thinking about it is that what she's doing is, what they're doing is dropping these things in the point, so it is erasing something from that point. Now, let's say they dropped it onto nowhere when the Guardians are there, and mm. erase the Guardians from the timeline. Bad things. You know, like uh, right there, that that's Guardians <laughs> one. Times. So, so they don't stop. Uh, Ronan, Ronan gets the Power Stone. Thanos gets the, or Thanos goes after Ronan. Probably destroys Nova early, and the Kree War. Who knows? You know, what I mean, shit goes awry, and so we are talking shit going awry in forty two, possibly more different spots all at once. And as Mobius explained, all of these branches will continue to grow. And you have to go to the point where it started. You can't like go yeah. back and stop her from doing this. You can't go you know, back and like, stop her that's doing too it because late. it's because it's moving constantly. It's constantly changing. The branches yep. is constantly growing as you growing. will. So he says you have to physically go there in order to do something about it. Which, which is like I said, this is twofold. The second point is this then scrambles the remaining TVA Minutemen slash Hunter forces to lead the TVA itself to go stop these branches from, from growing or going past red line, which was what it leaves the TVA vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Meaning there's no, all you have there are these, these four eyed analysts mm -hmm. and nobody else. Casey Kasem, Basie Basem about to get served. Basie Basem down there with his evidence locker. Don't, and, and you may have a couple people who may know how to use one of those time batons, but you don't really have a, a protective force there anymore. Mm -mm, not when you got this many jump offs jumping off. And this is like the reverse, you know, of the Joker's move in the Dark Knight where, you know, he gets brought into GCPD and just like get all the cops out so I can break Put into GCPD. There, yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So I. You sent them all. It, you know, you're right. This is Dark Knight Rises. You sent them all on the ground? They right, all of them are gone because my thing is there's so many events and we see like these and again we don't know as, as really exactly how many uh, Minutemen she's killed, but 
from my understanding, these teams are of between four to six people. Yeah. And if she has at least, let's say 50, 50 times six people per team, how many people has she killed thus far? How many minute men has she killed thus far? And how much more? And how much more does she have to go? I mean, how much more are left in the TVA? Like, yeah, you sure saw how many goddamn, point? that shit goes on forever, fam. There is a lot of people in this whole organization. All right. And enough people to stop each and every branch? Maybe. We'll see. Mm. And who knows how long. I mean, they're going to have limited time. But my thing is, she, at this point, the TVA is just defenseless. Yes. Well, yeah. possibly. Kang! <laughs> <laughs> With comes to Loki, Loki Lofton, Tom Hiddleston. Why do you think, why does he go after Lady Loki in the time door? Uh... Because Loki chose violence. I love that scene because we see the lights uh, turn to red, like hell, you know, darkness, all that, whatever. And then it flickers back and forth between the red and the normal lighting. And Loki got to make that choice. And he chooses mm. the red. You know, he chooses the violence. Plus, he wants to find out. Like, he's obsessed with being more knowledge, more chaos, etc. This woman, this person just pulled off one of the biggest things ever, something he has had to do is fucking up the TVA, something he wants to do. So, of course, you know, like, psh, I'm out. Think I'm going to yeah. roll with you, Mobius? Cornball? Nah. Nah. When we talk about Hunter C-20, played by Sasha Lane, mm. you express how she kept talking, how she kept repeating, it's real, I want to go home, when they find her in, like, this hysteria in the rocks cart. Mm -hmm. And she also mentions that she told Lady Loki how to find the timekeepers. Yeah, he's, yeah. Now, here's my thing. And also, notice how they call her commander, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, is she like the head head of all of no, the 100 slash no, minute men? No, no. One she's commander, just a big, not She's general. just a big. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But she's just a big dog in there, right? Yeah, I mean, commander. How that do, might be, you know, that might be right above a sergeant. How does she know where to find? Is that just common? Because to me, and the reason why I ask is because it seems like really, really mm, sensitive mm -mm. information, like... The creation of the TVA, the, the you know the files about like the beginning mm -hmm. or the end of time are very classified, very sensitive. Is the t is the timekeeper's location not sensitive? Yes, the TVA's location is sensitive. That's what she told him. In the comic books, they okay. exist in a nowhere time space, so it's like you can't just get there easily. So that's what it is. But I think once you get into that thing, I think you know obviously Lady Loki or whoever else is you know they'll figure that out. You know, okay. yeah, you know, okay. You got me into the Nakatomi building. I'm gonna blow this bitch up. Okay. You know, another reference I, right there. You know, I want to go to Ravana real quick. Google and bought the raw. Google. It's good. Which what I said earlier this episode. I don't. I don't really trust her all the way. Is she lying about who she is and what her role is and all this other stuff? Yes, she has a completely different history and background in the comics, at least. And, and again, that's what we see so far. Who knows what she's going to be at the end of this series? But is she like the true front for the timekeepers? Like she seems to know so much about what the timekeepers are doing. She's doing that. Like to me, she feels very the wizard in The Wizard of Oz where... Mm -hmm. Where when Mobius is like, you know, how do the timekeepers feel about this? And she goes, and she's like, oh, they're really into this. Like, she's yeah. talking as if she's talking in the third person. But it's just <laughs> like, are you talking about yourself, bitch? Like, I uh, I don't know. The timekeepers won't like that. <laughs> right. Like, oh, they're not going to like that. Homie. Like, it's like, I'm, you're talking about yourself? What's the sign for? Jimmy doesn't like this. <laughs> timekeepers <laughs> don't like this. <laughs> and and also just in terms of understanding her real, her true identity, or even her past or or multiple identities, in her office, on her mantles we or her shelves, we see all the, as they call them, trophies that her analysts or agents have given her during their, um, I don't want to say conquest, but during their their... What, what am I trying to say? During their travels adventures. through time, adventures yeah. through time. I noticed that she has a, a time baton as well as a helmet in her office that mm -hmm. says A23 on it. Mm -hmm. Now, what I've come to re realize or, or recognize is that only hunters, which are like the people who lead the group of Minutemen. So the Minutemen are the foot soldiers. The hunters are people like Wumi, mm -hmm. are people like... Uh, D, uh, uh, what's Wumi destination again? Her destination B, is B fifteen. Yep. Um, C twenty. Yep. The other, the other dude that has a bad attitude. His designation is D ninety. Now again, Ravana has A twenty three. Now to me, if Jordan. you're just looking at, <laughs> now if you're just looking at the way these these letters and numbers go, you could say that A because A precedes all of these. These are maybe an early hunter. 
So could this be something like Ravana used to be a hunter? No, A, a is top. Ravana Mana was a hunter, and A B C D. You just said it right there. Like it just A is the top, and then she becomes a judge. Whatever is above okay. Hunter is what Ravana is. If not, you know, maybe she was like Judge Dredd rolling around judging in the streets with the A on, you know? Yo. And towards the point you made last week about the statue behind her, her judge's desk in her office, that statue behind her desk, it does resemble Kang a bit. And in this it does episode, resemble Kang. it is a, when we go into the office, it's focused on that one. You know, mm-hmm. you, they're all three of the statues are there, but you are focused on the one that looks the most like Kang. So, yeah, and Kang's the only one with his arm outstretched, kind of like Jesus. Yep. And the other two timekeeper statues, they're holding like um, what the uh, hourglass kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so. Ravona's door to her office is covered in tiny hourglasses. Really? Yep. Shout out to the design team. Well done. Yo, the design team went was in a bag. They snapped for this yeah. show. Mobius and Mobius, our our, our friend Owen Wilson, he, we may need to focus more on the nature of his relationship with Ravana because besides him like exhibiting what may be considered jealousy, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, he when he comes to visit her, and they are very intentional again with the shots. You got to be paying attention to what they decide to zoom in on. Some of it could be red herrings, but some of it is intentional. So like. They zoom in on the fact that after she gives him the drink, he puts it on the desk next to him, and there are like two or so ring stains on her desk, the drink stains yes. um, from his cup. And she's like, yo, get use a coaster or whatever. And he was just, and he, he tries to complain like he didn't do it. She says, well, those were from you, meaning he's been in her office multiple times. Now, is it a situation where he's just constantly getting reprimanded and reviewed, or is it something else? Like, it is not. Is Let's nip this in the bud. A, 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 and wait, and let me explain. It's three different things. Is he just in there kikiing all the time? Yes. Is he constantly in trouble? Or is it this theory that those are other variants of Mobius that have just been in the office multiple times? Oh, oh, okay. I thought you were going to go with the theory that they were having some secret relationship, which is just like yeah. not happening. Um, no, I would go with all three of those. Like, it could be okay. all three. You know, it's definitely showing that they are going through the same motions over and over again. You know, that low, that, and that's what he says. Can a person change? Can't we do something else? Because they're always doing the same thing. Got to fix this. Okay, come in with your report. You have a drink. You put it down. You go out. You fix something else. How long, Loki asked him, how long have you been here? Who knows? You know what I mean? This has <laughs> been going on and on. Plus... A Mobius loop, like you said, it's e- even if it's him, he might be looping back in time again and doing this whole thing over and over again. Yes. You know, who knows? So, yeah, I, I go with all three on that one. Yeah. And just 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 a characterization point, this could mean nothing, but I just made notice of it. Mobius and Mobius is left-handed. Mm. So if we see a situation where there are multiple Mobius and you see them change you know, hand hand uh, dominance, then maybe you'll you'll notice that. I like going with Mobius says. motherfucking Mobius now. That's my <laughs> name. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, the Just one last character point when it comes to Miss Minutes, again, played by the incredible Tara Strong or voiced by Tara Strong. Um, we, we note that she's, she claims she's sort of both real and, and digital or whatever she is. And me personally, I view her like Navi from Zelda or like your ghost from Destiny mm-hmm. or even like a Pokedex from Pokemon because she apparently can be summoned because when you look at the 10 pad, there is your, uh, you have some, a few operations you can get, you can summon a time door, you can summon her um, and do a couple of other things. So I feel like she can be brought into whatever space requested and either make, you know, make analysis or actually make things happen because apparently she can at least interact with her environment. Yeah. So that might come into play later. Yes. When she and starts going buck ham on people later on. I, yeah, we don't know. And finally, we want to buck talk real ham. quick about the Easter eggs inspiration and music in this episode. Ben, I mean, you want to talk about the music a little bit? Yes, I do. My jam, Holding Out for a Hero by the great Bonnie Tyler, is featured in the Renaissance Fair. And also, shout out to anyone who's actually been to a Renaissance Fair because I grew <laughs> up going to them joints in Texas. So, I think my brother has. Oh sometimes. man! As soon as it, <laughs> as soon as the episode started, I was like, "Oh my childhood!" Like, like if that would have been in Texas in that year, I would have been there, boy. You know, having me with them big ass turkey legs. Oh yeah. 
Oh, you and, love that? Oh. <laughs> they were in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 1985. Yeah, I was nowhere near there. But um, yes, Holding Out for a Hero by Bonnie Tyler is from the Footloose soundtrack. So it is appropriate for the time because the Footloose came out in 1984. And, you know, the song is about holding out for a hero. And before it starts, you hear the voice from the Renaissance Fair where the man says, a great battle is about to commence. The prize, our princess. Will evil prevail or are we holding out for a hero? Which, yes. combined with the fact that this is our introduction to Lady Loki, is she the hero of the story? Rebelling against is the Loki, TVA? Is Loki the hero? No. I'm, I, <laughs> hell no. He's a dude. How could he be the hero? Um, there it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, is this just foreshadowing to the events yet to be seen in this series? Or even if, like a foreshadowing of what we're going to see in Doctor Strange? Like, what what's happening here? No, I don't think so. I think it's more about... Because one, like I say, people would like to... I remember, these people are not working together. You know what I mean? Like, he, like his man's working on this, doesn't know what's happening in Doctor Strange. And, you, and uh, so you can't really foreshadow shit. And also, man's working on Doctor Strange would be mad if you foreshadow something for him to have to put on Doctor Strange. The guy who helped write the screenplay for Doctor Strange also wrote Loki. Oh, well, there you go. Well, man's working now, on more than one but project. But to your point, but to your point. But that's a lot, you know what I mean? That's, like, yeah, there may not be any true correlation, but yeah. true exact correlation, but yeah, I am just just want to point that yeah, out. Yeah, but there, no, I yeah. think it's more about that, you know, which hero are we holding out for? You yeah. know, and nah, it ain't. I mean, I think our Loki, variant Loki, whatever, main after Loki, is going to be changed by Lady Loki to become the hero. You know, they're yeah. going to have to reevaluate how they look at things. Yeah. 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 They, in Ravana's office, that stereo is playing this song called um, 18 More. It's a, it's a piece of a musical selection called 18 More So, uh, OP72, number 2A. Well, anyway, that song features <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. an instrument. I, mean, I just wanted to say so yeah. people. Y'all could Google it. But that song <laughs> features an instrument called a theremin. I think this also this instrument was in WandaVision. WandaVision. Yes. And yeah. So it, it, it's that sh- kind of weird, strange, mm-hmm. humming, a very alien-like sound, at least to humans, very alien-like mm-hmm. sound. And the way it's controlled is like the, the person who's controlling it, the thereminist, I guess they're Ooh. called, they don't even really touch, touch it. Mm-mm. It's like two antennas and based on the position of the thereminist hands, it controls the frequency of the sounds that come out of this this machine, and these are all electric signals. So there's someone who you know, sight unseen, touching, making the sounds, making the music happen. Again, what's going on here in the TVA? We don't know. Yeah, and definitely was featured in Wandavision, and it's usually used to feature and signify, especially in sixties and seventies, which works with the TVA's whole equipment, with everything. The aesthetic, yeah, yeah, the aesthetic, the reel to reel that's playing this song in her office. All these things go together because the theremin was always in them old cartoons, old horror movies, old science fiction. Always you would hear a theremin constantly, boy. Like that joint's in everything. Scooby Doo. Yeah. Watch any old episode of Scooby Doo and a theremin is in it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, Got it. Hell yeah. That's where I always know it from the Scooby Doo cartoons. Yeah. As as Mobius is constantly making mention of this other analyst or the analyst you keep on the side uh, to Ravana, <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. That's like it's very kind of jealous. Like, yeah. like what do you mean? Like that's you talk about. He's talking about her side piece or whatever. Yeah. But he says that again when he's signing the reports and he looks at the pen and it very distinctly says Franklin D Roosevelt High School. Lots of reaches here of what this could be pertaining to. This could. This could be a uh, an in show shout out to Joe Quinones, who uh, is an alum of FDR High School in upstate New York, and he is a comic book artist that has done tons of covers and artistry, and specifically covers featuring Mobius, TVA, and Loki. You can Google his work uh, yeah, there. But once again, Joe is like not known for this for Loki at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not. He, I I think that one. I think we going for our you know Jordan uh, you know the reach on that one. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it you know a big reach like, again. Another reach is about it could be related to what the the one in Brooklyn because again Franklin D Roosevelt High School is a very 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 common school name yeah all throughout America and you know and at least when you cross reference it with Marvel it still doesn't really you don't still get too many hits but again I got well when I search for it the top search I got comes up as the FDR in Brooklyn 
which Mm -hmm. could be related to Captain America in some way because he is famously from Brooklyn. Also, there are some pins that Tony Stark gives him from, uh, but they are different pins, you know? So it could be a variant pin. I don't know. You know, who, I mean? knows? who knows? It could be Mobius' own pin. Who, who knows? knows? It could be one huge reach I saw, even bigger than goddamn Joe Quinos, is that um, in the comic books, uh, Molecule Man, Owen Reese, is from Brooklyn. And might have gone to FDR High School in the comics. And Molecule Man is a very big character who is probably coming up sometime in the near future. And okay. has a lot to do with secret wars and all this other stuff. But another okay. big reach. The scenes that you all see when they go to the <laughs> archives, when they go in the elevator and they go to all those, looks like infinite or million numbers of floors. I keep knocking down my, my, my God here. But <laughs> when they go through the, the infinite archives, that's actually a shot from the Atlanta Marriott Marquis Hotel in real life. Mm. Uh, that's the one of the hotels that hosts Dragon Con, the mm-hmm. famous cosplay convention in Atlanta every summer, typically before COVID. And what they did is they just kind of doubled or tripled up on the shots. Like they used composite shots to make it look like an infinite row of hallways so just want you to all know that that's actually a real place in real life it really does look like that just not that many floors that you see in the show nice they uh, there is the boku juice you see which is a real juice from the 90s and early 2000s before we saw the was it jost or yost drink jost uh, uh, actually real yeah both of these are real and like the jet skis uh show mobius's fascination with the 90s which has led some people to say that he might have been a person taken from the 90s. Okay. Yep. The when when Mobius goes back and from retrieves from the evidence case that kablooey blueberry flavor chewing gum, they he expresses that it was originally sold sold on earth between 2047 and 2051. I thought that was interesting because the gum has very retro stylings on mm-hmm. it, which reminds me of the TVA and again are they in once again, are they involved in this somehow? Why is that specific styling happening in the 2040s and the 2050s? It's, you know, we're in 2021 now, so it's just... And again, themes come back all the time. Yeah. Like right now, the 2000s is big again, so... Or the early 2000s, the 9 and 2000s. And the and 80s. The, I mean, Stranger Things is popping still. Like, shit and don't stop. this candy, I noticed it said it had nine units on it. They mean nine, nine pieces, but why would they use the term units... I just thought that it reminded me of like on their 10 pads when they talk about they have a certain num- a certain amount of time before they get to a red line. They use th- that that quantity that they use as units. Yep. So just keep that in mind. And, and uh, there's a yeah. nightmare looking character on the Kablooey box. Yeah, this It's just getting weird, y'all. <laughs> on one of the files that Loki is reviewing, when he's reading the file about Ragnarok specifically... You can see in fine print there is a line that says codename Revengers. And that's actually the same name that Thor gave Valkyrie, the Hulk and himself, when they were decided to go back and team up and go fight the good fight in in, in, in Asgard. Yep. Uh, also comes from the comics. Yeah. But they were also referring to the fact that they all wanted revenge. Yes. The all the apocalyptic events ref, Loki refers to, they're all related to effects of global warming. So our our future is not looking bright. He mentions that there's a the climate disaster of 2048, the tsunami of 2051, extinction of the swallow in 2050, and Krakatoa erupted in 2049. That has nothing to do with mutants' faults. That's not Krakoa. Not Krakoa. I know <laughs> everybody Krakoa, was, which is a real place. Yeah, but. I know everybody was immediately like, "What? No, 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 relax." Ben, I mean, you mentioned this earlier. Roxcar is an offshoot, as you can say, is an offshoot of Roxxon. Roxxon is actually a mega conglomerate in the MCU, also mentioned in the comics, that at least in the MCU is responsible for the creation of the atomic bomb. And they're also responsible for, involved in, or related to a series of disastrous events within the comics and the MCU. I mean stores and gas stations and all sorts of things blowing up there there's some type of disaster there's an oil spill the oil spill. so basically if you see a rocks on this or a rocks cart or some rocks something some type of disaster is probably right behind it or has already happened uh also in the comics they're responsible for a lot more than disasters they do all kind of different nefarious stuff they're part of this thing project pegasus which i think is what showed up in the first uh mcu when i mean in the first avengers 
I think that's what they were calling where they kept the Tesseract. But also, Rotson has shown up in the MCU in the background over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're just waiting for them to make a bigger appearance. But this might be all they are because they're kind of like, I mean, they're obviously based on Exxon. And even in the MCU, Roxxon is like when you go through the Ames, the Hydras, you know, it's like Roxxon is like down below. Like they struggled even with Tony Stark. You know, they were. Yeah, they, they, he, they wild struggle. Yeah, they and were yeah, wild they, struggle. You, you're right about Project Pegasus. That's just that program where they keep all the objects of like foreign origin mm-hmm. or mysterious, unexplained power. They keep all that stuff. So that's where the. You know, yeah. The and in the comics, yeah. Project Pegasus was where they did all kind of experiments on. Yeah. Items like that. It's their it's their area fifty one. Yeah, pretty much. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Rocks on yeah and Exxon. It was yeah, they've always been like I think this is as far as they go in MCU is like being background stuff because they are so cornball. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, I, I oh, there was this one point that I did see um later on in a video. They mentioned that AIM, uh, advanced idea mechanics makes a quick, quick cameo actually in the very first episode. Um, that shovel that Lady Loki used, like you see like a shovel that's stuck mm-hmm. in the dirt. If you zoom in on the control or the control console, it actually says, or, or excuse me, when it's being um, analyzed, it says that it's made by AIM. Oh, that's interesting because other people were wondering, did Lady Loki get that shovel from Rothstark in the future? You know what I mean? It's a shovel made by AIM, but could it be sold by Roscart? Who the Why fuck not? knows? Why not? <laughs> Amazon sells you everything. I'm sure they got some AIM Hydra products on their joint. Of course they do. Yep. And that is the end of our review of episode two of Loki titled The Variant. Thank you all for joining us. We had uh, an intense session, a tense past the blunt section about time and space and what is real, what is not, what is belief. And what is faith? If you enjoy this, and I know you did because you're still listening to me, make sure you do a few things for us. Number one, follow us at Fuse from the 616 on Twitter, at For All Nerds on Twitter and Instagrams. Make sure you're following me at Tatiana King as well as DJ Benhamin to talk to us personally and have some conversation. And thank you so much to everyone who has been super, super, super duper in supporting us Thank you, thank you, thank you. Without you, we would not be here. And also because of you, we're able to pay our social media people, our person rather, what up, Chica, our our engineers, our, <laughs> Ben, I'm over there dancing, you make me laugh, our, our gaming editors, everybody who works on the Foral Nerd teams, we will actually pay them as fairly as possible and give them access and give them supplements to help their lives be better because you all help us by doing a few things. You go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash for all nerds, where you can become a patron and you can donate financially or, or uh, patron, what's that called? Just be a patron financially? I don't know. But as you are a patron, you get special privileges. So you get access to special reviews that we only drop on Patreon. You get access to things that no one else may get. You get access to giveaways and things of that nature. Special privileges, as I said. You can also... Also help us and support us by going to our Tee Public, tpublic.com slash stores slash for all nerds. And that beautiful glowing views from the 616, one out of six variant colors of the views from the 616 logo. You can get that on an incredible mask. You still need to wear your mask in a lot of places, so please still go get your mask. We can also get that on a t-shirt, on cups, on totes, on phone covers, books, whatever you like. And make sure, most importantly, very importantly, that you are subscribed and following us. Follow us right now or, or subscribe to us. You can right now on Twitch, twitch.tv slash 4 nerds so you can see our lovely faces and join the incredible Twitch fan fam who is making it rain up in the comments. Also, make sure you are following us on your favorite, so, uh, your favorite social media platform, but your favorite podcast platform. We are on damn near every platform imaginable at For All Nerds. For All Nerds, follow us. Anything else, Benjamin? Now. <laughs> <laughs>